Hello, good morning, and good evening. My name is Asada, and in this episode of Map Making Academy for Flood Escape 2, we're going to be going through everything you need to know about water. This includes how to place and make more water, as well as how to set the state of the water if you want it to be acid or lava, as well as going through move water one more time, and going through simple reminders such as that. Without further ado, what we have here is our test course once again, and we see here that inside the intro we have our one water, which is the only water that we have in the map. We want to make more, there's two ways we can do it. First of all, I'm going to start by bringing it out of the intro, just to make things a little easier. And I have here, the map is actually separated into three sections now. You have the first section, you have the inside section, and then you have the bigger third section. So I'm going to go ahead and actually bring this a little smaller, so we can give each section its own little water. And so, there's two ways you can do it. The easiest way, of course, is to press Control D. This will duplicate the part in its own folder. And then we can simply move it to wherever we want. So we're going to line it up very nicely like that. Actually, I think that's inside of the wall. Yep. And then we scale it down just to make sure it fits perfectly within our little walls right here. All right. And if we don't want to copy and paste it, we can simply just make our own. So it's a little more difficult because you have to remember all the properties of it, but simply we're going to create a new part. First of all, we want to go to the properties and make sure it's anchored and can collide false, just like these. And we're going to set the transparency to 0.4. We're going to make it I believe, or is it material? We're going to set it to granite, like this. And finally, we want to assign it a color. So this section, I actually want it to be acid that you're swimming in. So we're going to make it, you can do green for acid. You can also do purple. I've seen dark side forest with purple. So I think I'm going to do purple in this section. And finally, as with any other part, we're simply just going to bring it up to scale. So we'll be right back with that. All right, so we've implemented all of our different water sections. In fact, I want to make them just distinct enough, so I actually might make this dude a little greener. And there we go. So, now we have all our waters, but we actually don't have them named properly. So what we want to do is just go through all the water parts we have. This one's called Water 1, which is fine. We're going to rename them in order of how they appear. You don't have to do it in order, but I prefer it in order. And you have to have them start with underscore water and then a number. And that signal that signals to the scripts in Flood Escape that this is a liquid you can swim through. And so this one right here, even though we want it to be acid, we're going to call it underscore water three. All right. And then from last time, we know that this water is actually inside the intro. So we're going to go ahead and drag it in there right now. And we want to remember, Water 1 is in the intro. We're going to need that for when we start going into the event script, which we'll be doing a little bit later in the video. Before we do that, though, there is an option you can do with the water called the state modifier. And what that does, you want to go into the Explorer. You want to search for a string value. And you want to rename it to state. And in this value, Flutterscape doesn't care about anything else aside from two words. If it sees the word acid, it's going to turn it into acid, which will make your air tank go down further, or more quickly rather. And if it sees lava, it's going to turn into lava, it's going to instantly kill you. This is also a good way to get around having to use it in the scripts, because if I say... If I say, okay, I don't know how to do this, so I'm going to start out as water, and then I'm going to immediately turn it into acid as the map starts, it's going to be forced to be green only. If we want a different color, say we want the purple, or maybe we want like a dark orange, like a sludgy color, we would need to, or we would be unable to do that without the state modifier. So that being out of the way, we're going to now go into the script to figure out how the water works. 
So we have our button functions from earlier, as well as we have this, which comes with the map making kit as just like an example function for what you want to do. We're actually going to comment that out. So if you want to comment out code, pretty much make it not work or make the the script kind of ignores it, but you can still see it. You want to put two hyphens in front of any line you have. And pretty much this is just here for reference. It's not going to actually happen in the script. So as you're going through the course, of course, if I were to simply put commands down right here, like say I said, I want to change the intro to lava at some point. If I were to just put it right there, for example, it would happen immediately as the map loads in. If we don't want that, we're going to simply add in a wait statement. And what this does is for however many seconds you put in the parentheses, let's say I'm going to wait, I don't know, 15 seconds. The game will wait that long before executing anything else in a row. So think of the script like a list of instructions that goes through top to bottom. If it hits a wait statement, it will wait. If it hits a command, it will execute the command, and it will simply go top to bottom in its execution. So we can even, if we want to, for example, if we want to say, wait five, three times, this is perfectly acceptable. Every time the, the compiler will see that, or the, the script will see that every one of these wait statements is in front of this, so it's going to wait for five seconds for three times. Five times three is 15 seconds. So it's going to wait 15 seconds, which would be the same amount of time. So to go into the commands you can do with the water, there are two of them. Of course, right here we have the set water state command. And pretty much, first of all, for these functions, you want to put in lib.script. for the prefix or for before you do anything else. And then the set water state command in the parentheses, it takes two parts separated by a comma. This is how most functions in computer science work. So the first thing you send in is the water that you want to affect with the state. So of course here we have lib.map, which is brings us here. Then we go to the intro, which is right here. And then we go to water one, which we do see water one is in the intro. So it, the script has successfully found it. And what it's going to do is it's going to set the state to lava, which is again, one of the two keywords that the state function cares about. It also cares about water. So you can set it back to water. If I want to set it to water like that, it would work perfectly fine but it's already water, so we don't want to do that. If we want to though, we can actually set it back to water temporarily, so, or not temporarily, just for however long we want. That's the power of scripting. So we're going to type it in again one more time. After six seconds, we want to turn it back to water. So we're going to do lib script set water state intro underscore water one water. So after 15 seconds of being in the map, this body of water is going to turn red and it's going to turn into lava. That means if we touch it, we will instantly die. And then after that, after six seconds, it's going to turn back into water so we can safely jump back into it, which will be pretty cool. The second thing we can do is, of course, we have our button functions. So Let's say, for example, when we press this button, I want the water to suddenly rise and then suddenly fall back. Not necessarily up to where we're drowning, but just sort of rise up maybe to like right here. So that's going to take a little bit of investigation work on our part, but we do know that we have the move water function to help us out with most of that. So we're going to go ahead and create another button function. If you're confused about button functions, you can go back to the video all about buttons. That's going to be episode three. So we're going to work with the second button. And so we're going to grab 
the move water function. And we're gonna just put in the dummy, we're just gonna put in dummy values for everything. We have the move water function set up already. What we want to do is calculate how far up we want the water to move. It might seem a little bit complicated. All you need is a pen and a paper and maybe a calculator, which you can easily just go to Google for. So right here, we see that we want to go to position. And position, we see that water has a height value, which is the middle value, also called the Y value, of 24. So we're gonna write that down, 24. And how far do we want it to move up? Well, if I move it up too far, it's gonna suddenly just appear out of nowhere right here. So we're gonna put it just barely below that. We can see that the value of 31 works out pretty well for this. So we have 31. And we go back down and it was at 24. So what we want to do is subtract the two values. 31 minus 24 is seven. And so when we move it up seven, this will suddenly appear at 31. So we're going to go tell the script that we want to move it up by 7. So we go up to the function, we replace the y with 7. The water, we have to go find the water, which it looks like it's not in the intro right now. That's correct. So it would simply be lib.map. underscore water2. And then finally, we have this T value. T value stands for the time it takes for it to go from one position to the other. So what we're doing is we're telling the scripts, okay, we want it to move like this. We need to tell it how long it want, we want it to take. So let's just go ahead and say we want it to take three seconds. And then we, we have it move up. Now we want it to move back down. So what some people might do is they might simply copy and paste, and if they want it to go down, of course you would want it to be a negative value. So you would go down 7, which would be negative 7, and they would simply leave it at that. However, keep in mind that the script will go through as many commands as it can before it sees a wait statement, assuming it's not in one of the button functions, but the button function almost acts like a mini event script. So when the button is hit, it's just going to go through this list of commands. The thing about the move water function is that it does not wait for other move water function. So if I were to put in a script like this, the water would simultaneously move up. It would be forced to move up for three seconds and then it would be forced to move down for three seconds. And because they are the same value and the same amount of time, they would cancel out immediately and it wouldn't look like the water is moving at all. So what we want to do is simply just put a wait statement there. Let me type wait properly. And now we have this first function that makes it rise. And we have, and we force the water to wait for how long this takes before it goes back down. It's not going to be, it goes up for three seconds, it waits for three seconds, it's going to go down for three seconds. No, what the, the script does is it executes this statement, and then it waits for three seconds. And during the three seconds that it waits, that's the same time that the water rises up with this function. And then after all that happens, it will execute this statement which will, over the next three seconds, allow it to go back down. And finally, we're going to address the third part of the water with the map. I don't know what I want to do with this, but of course, if you're going to take too long in a map, you're going to have the water turn into acid or lava and you're going to have it rise quicker and quicker to make sure that anyone who's lagging behind doesn't stay there the entire time, as well as giving the map a sense of difficulty. So we've already waited for 21 seconds here, that's our time, 21 seconds, because 
5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 6 is 21. So let's say... How long do we want to give people? How long does the course take? Maybe it takes... 50 seconds if we're being very generous. So... We have... Let's say we want it to be a one minute before... We want people. We want to give people one minute to complete the map. If they don't, we're gonna rise up the acid, which will kill them all. So, 60 seconds in a minute. Subtract the 21 seconds we have already. That leaves us with a 39 second wait. So after all these waits in total, the map would have been playing for one minute. And at this point, we can go ahead and put in one more move water we're gonna grab it from up here okay so we're gonna grab the move water from up here and we're gonna paste it down right here anything outside of the button function will of course happen regardless of if any buttons are pressed we're gonna make it water three we're going to i don't know how far we want it to rise up let's say i just want it to rise up by 30. we don't want it to be too quick because if something rises up by 30 studs in 3 seconds, that is 10 studs per second. That is every second the acid rises up like this. 1, 2, 3. It would rise up about that fast, which is very quick. I know some people actually do want it to go about that quick. But we're going to make it a little slower than that. Let's give it twice the amount of time, so 6 seconds. And after that... We're going to assume that either everyone has completed the map or died, so we don't have to do anything else. So we're going to go ahead and hop into community maps to see how everything works out. Okay, we're back in community maps one more time. I want to make sure we remove the right map making kit. We're going to go ahead and hop in here. So we have added three functions. The first one is going to turn the first section into lava and then back into water. Second section will rise and then make the water fall once we press this button. And in the third section, everything will rise if we're not pretty much done by the one minute mark. Got the first button here. See, it turns red, which is lava. If I were to jump in there, it would kill me. And then it turns back to green, or rather yellow, uh, blue. I know my colors, trust me. So yeah, we can swim back through here, perfectly okay. For the second section, we're gonna grab the button, everything rises up, and then it goes right back down, right as intended. So here we are at the end of the map. While I would just simply be able to finish up right here, I'm going to wait for the acid to rise, actually. And there we go, we've hit one minute. The acid is rising, and it actually is acid. It started out as acid. We go in here, and we can see our time is over one minute. And that's exactly how we designed it to be. So, that's some of the... That's the majority of the functions you can do with water. There are some other things that are extremely tricky that I am not going to go through on a beginner guide. And for now, I hope you guys learned something new. And if you ha have any questions, any comments, any concerns, Go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section below. I will always read your comment, and if it's something important, I will heart it or pin it or reply to it. And if you have any questions, I will also do my best to help you out. In any case, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you soon. So, now you know a lot about how liquids work in Flood Escape 2, specifically how to change their states and how to interact with them through scripting. Next time, I'll be showing you how to configure the settings of your map, as well as how to upload it, update it, and get it whitelisted. Until next time, this has been Asada. See you soon.